think D here deserves a round of applause yeah. for all the help today. Yeah. And Pam here has also been super helpful. Everybody, round of applause for Pam. Yeah. Okay, our next big speaker is Brittany Novotny. Oklahoma City, I'm so proud to stand in front of you guys right now. This is a great turnout, and I'm really happy to be here. We, you and me, we are Oklahomans. We are LGBT. We are LGBT allies. We are human beings. We are Oklahomans. I know that many of us have been wringing our hands the last week and a half. Some of us have gone so far as to make broad statements about some of our fellow Oklahomans who this year voted for candidates based merely on whether that candidate claimed to support, quote, conservative Oklahoma values. Well, what are conservative Oklahoma values anyway? I'm an Oklahoman. And I always thought that the values I shared with my fellow Oklahomans were the values of hard work, generosity, and treating others the way I want to be treated. Yeah. Oklahoma builds itself as being in the heartland, but conservative politicians have been stirring up, with ha stirring up voters with hatred, bigotry, and divisiveness. Those aren't the Oklahoma values that I was raised with. Some true progressive candidates were handily defeated this year. But let us remember, they weren't defeated by a margin of 100% to 0%. There were still 30 to 40% of Oklahomans who chose not to vote for the politics of fear and division. That means that at least one in three Oklahomans chose hope over fear. One in three. That may not sound like a majority, and it's not a majority, but that's a substantial group of Oklahomans who are ready for a politics of inclusiveness and fairness. Today, let's make sure that we make our voices heard and let the world know that we are Oklahomans too. Now, as Oklahomans, I want to take a minute to take the time to honor and recognize those in the LGBT community who have come before us and paved the way for us to be here today. People like Barbara Cleveland, also known by some as Mother Herland. Barbara was instrumental in the creation of Herland Sister Resources. And people like my uncle, Jules Gullikers, who started opening up gay nightclubs in Oklahoma City in the late 70s and early 80s. My uncles told me stories of running these nightclubs during that time. Uh, oftentimes, police officers would come into his club on a regular basis and harass customers, calling them faggots and queers, sometimes breaking glasses on the bar, and oftentimes arresting patrons for the mere crime of being gay. He even told me that he was arrested from time to time for violations such as having no soap in the restrooms. Of course, the only reason there was no soap in the restrooms was that the officers had gone in there and thrown the soap in the trash. Now, thankfully, whenever he'd get to court, the facts would come out and the conviction, and he would not be convicted, the charges would be dropped. But he had to keep an emergency bank bag hidden in the, in the bar in order to bail out patrons of the club on a regular basis. This was the 1980s, folks. This was our, most, many of us were alive during this. And some, of, and some of us remember, I'm 28, so I don't remember it, but I know you guys before me, you do. And there was a time when gay and lesbian people couldn't even enjoy a drink with their friends in a bar in Oklahoma City not that long ago. Now, um, as did not get said in my introduction, but that I'm going to say now, I am a trans woman. That means that so that means that at birth I was identified as male. I always knew something was different about me, and uh, when faced with having to hide my true self from the world, 
for the rest of my life or choosing to be free and happy, I chose freedom. That was not an easy road, but it was an easier road than being a phony for the rest of my life. And even my mother, who was a devout Catholic and at first was not supportive of my transition, admitted to me in the past year that she really understood now that this is who I am and that I'm a much happier person. My mother spent three weeks in the ICU in August and September. During her time there, she was in and out of a coma a couple of times. This one Saturday morning, I went up there expecting to find her still unconscious, and I walked in the room, and her eyes opened up. We stared at each other for a good five minutes before either one of us said a word to each other. And the first words that she uttered were, Brittany, you're a beautiful woman inside and out. Now, she didn't only grow to tolerate me, she grew to fully accepting me as the human being that I am. Unfortunately, she never made it out of the hospital. She passed away on September 15th. Although she's not here physically today, I know that she's watching down over me, and it's that faith that she raised me to have that keeps me going strong today. Now, aside from being a woman who happens to be transgender, I also happen to be a heterosexual woman. Yet in some states like Texas and Kansas, if I as a woman were to marry a man, which would appear to the casual observer to be a heterosexual relationship, both my husband and I could find our marriage to be nullified in the event that our marriage became the subject of litigation. As we are all painfully aware, Oklahoma, California, and many other states have passed statutes and constitutional amendments defining marriages between one, quote, man and one, quote, woman. Well, who gets to decide if you're a man or a woman? What about those folks who are born with ambiguous genitalia or ambiguous chromosomes? Are they not allowed to marry anybody? In Texas, Christy Lee Littleton was married to her husband for about 10 years when he was killed in a workplace accident. Christy filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the negligent party, and in her deposition, when asked if she had ever gone by any prior names, she had to disclose that she had a past as a male. At that point, defense attorneys working for a large insurance company moved the court to dismiss the lawsuit on the grounds that she could never have legally been married to her husband in Texas, because even though she had fully transitioned to female, even though she identified herself as female, had a birth certificate stating she was female, and had a husband that cared and loved for her for the woman that she was, Texas says marriage can only be between a man and a woman. Now, almost needless to say, the court sided with the defense attorneys, and her lawsuit was dismissed. After 10 years of being married to the woman he loved, this heterosexual man was told that his marriage wasn't valid. Even this late heterosexual man, sorry, I'm lost, it's windy. Okay. Now, and after 10 years of being married to the man that she loved, she was told that her marriage hadn't really existed. The rights and benefits this couple believed to have attained with their marriage certificate were taken away with the stroke of a pen of a conservative activist judge.